until recently was one of Britain's most infamous unsolved crimes. The murder of two 17-year-old friends following a night <coughs> out at the World's End pub in Edinburgh triggered an enormous police investigation which would span decades in stark comparisons to the Yorkshire Ripper. Well, thanks to tireless detective work and incredible breakthroughs in forensic science, it finally ended last month with the conviction of a man believed to be Scotland's most prolific serial killer. Helen Scott and Christine Eady, two young lives brought to a brutal end in 1977. What they went through must have been horrific. 37 years after they died, serial killer Angus Sinclair has been found guilty of torturing, raping and murdering the 17-year-olds. You have displayed not one ounce of remorse for these terrible deeds. It brings to an historic conclusion one of the country's most notorious crimes. <laughs> Helen and Christine had been friends through school in the city of Edinburgh. Christine was a typist who came from a loving family. Helen had hopes of pursuing a career in childcare. She was a shy girl. She wasn't a dressy girl. She, I always said she was more a tomboy. Helen was nearly six years older than I, um, but she was just such a caring person. So many fun memories of Helen. On the night of October the 15th, 1977, the girls went with friends to the World's End pub on Edinburgh's Royal Mile. See you later. Bye. 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 Witnesses said two men had been there chatting with them. <laughs> the four left the pub together. It was the last time Helen and Christine were seen alive. Almost 20 years after the murders, DNA technology was emerging as a modern crime-fighting tool. <coughs> Scientists looked again at the case <coughs> <and> <coughs> that night. The carefully preserved evidence at last gave detectives their first breakthrough, a full DNA profile. We entered the profile onto the National DNA database, but nothing was returned. They continued to search for a match 
and by 2003 were ready to make an appeal on Crime Watch. What we hope to do at this stage is widen our search for him and perhaps identify him through his family. And this is a new development in DNA. A new development, it's called familial searching. Meanwhile, Helen's coat was tested yet again to see if it might yield any more clues. We didn't just find one sample that we found before, we found two samples. And the second profile gave a name. Angus Sinclair. A dangerous killer and convicted paedophile, he was already in jail serving two life sentences. And he was now firmly in the frame for the world's end murders. What officers still didn't know was who the first sample found on Helen's coat belonged to. An investigation of the people Sinclair knew in 1977 led them to this man, Gordon Hamilton, Sinclair's brother-in-law. But he had died in 1996, leaving no obvious way for police to obtain a DNA sample. Hamilton was a painter and decorator, so officers visited a house where he had worked. We found skin cells on the inside of the clothing. Those cells were the unique DNA that we needed to relate to Gordon Hamilton. Police finally had their two suspects. Crime Watch was with the team when they interviewed Angus Sinclair in 2005. He made no comments through the, the entire interview, which lasted many hours. It was unsatisfying, but there was still sufficient evidence at that time for us to charge him with the murders of both Christine and Helen. In 2007, Angus Sinclair went on trial for the World's End murders. But in a development that sent shockwaves through Scotland, the case was thrown out of court when the judge decided there was insufficient evidence. I, he didn't know where you were going to go and all that. So, oh, I promise you, I'm going. I, I just, it's never going to happen. At the time, under Scottish law, a person could not be tried for the same crime twice. Many believe Sinclair had evaded justice. Well, I think there was a lot of public disquiet uh, about the, um, the result of the 2007 case. It prompted a change of the law relating to double jeopardy. Scotland uh, modernised its legal system to allow, under certain limited circumstances, acquittals to be set aside and retrials ordered. Four years after he was acquitted, Sinclair could be considered a suspect once more, but only if new evidence came to light that was not available before. Once again, detectives turned to experts at the cutting edge of forensics to re-examine the evidence. They used a new tool called Crime Light. We recognised that potentially the ligatures could hold the, the key to success here. Painstakingly photographing, drawing, and then slowly uh, unpicking and cutting away the knots to start to analyse the searching for DNA. And what scientists found astonished investigators. Unlike earlier techniques, they were now able to see DNA in situ, allowing them to interpret exactly how it had got there. Sinclair's DNA was found within three knots, uh, which meant that it had been protected for 37 years and must have been there at the time the knots were being tied. The results were truly staggering. You were left in absolutely no doubt that that evidence identified the killer of uh, Christine and Helen. Earlier this year, the request for Scotland's first ever court case under the new double jeopardy law was granted. It took a jury just two hours to find Angus Sinclair guilty. I sentence you to life imprisonment, Your Honour, today. 
and a fixed appointment in part for 37 years. 37 years, the longest ever punishment handed down in a Scottish court, matching the time it had taken to bring Sinclair to justice. Uh, the girls didn't have a voice, but forensic science was their voice because it told the jury what had happened. This irrefutable evidence was only made possible by the diligent police teams that worked on the case across nearly four decades. Despite countless examinations and the handling, there was no contamination. Their care allowed the scientists of this modern day and age to prove who the killers of Christine and Helen were. If nothing else, the girls and my mother can now truly rest in peace. You brought a child up and she's just starting out in life, really. 17 year old. And the uh, stolen is just taken away from them. Christine, the same. She'll never leave me. Never. Heartbreaking and utterly horrifying, the whole thing. Yes, horrifying. It's a fraction of the crimes he committed. He almost certainly murdered four other women in Glasgow. He was already serving life for a series of rapes and sexual assaults. He killed, for the first time at 16, a girl of seven. A psychiatrist said then he is obsessed with sex and given the minimum of opportunity, he will repeat these offences. It was science then that trapped captain but it was it was really the detection the detectives at the heart of it yes it was almost personal police prosecutors the forensic scientists who worked the case they all saw themselves as custodians of the evidence and it was that evidence that gave them the answers the clothing the ligatures it gave them the answers the dna after nearly 40 years it was astonishing and that change of law on double jeopardy that was also crucial and it gave the families some justice but helen's dad said after the case finished he could never get closure, he said, because he could never forget seeing what Sinclair had actually done to his daughter. That one sentence gives you a tiny glimpse of the enormity of the suffering for the family. Thank you, Matthew.